Hi, I'm Spud Miller. This is the first in a series of videos I'm planning to do on various topics related to the things we do here at Fuel Injection Enterprises. I'll try to keep things short and interesting. Even though we're called Fuel Injection Enterprises, we're also a magneto manufacturer. Since we purchased Mallory's magneto business back in 2011, we're now the home of the Super Mag and the Sprint Mag. We also sell and service Pro Mags and Vertex Magnetos, so we measure all the different brands using the same equipment and the same methods. Let's clear up the confusion about how the Magnetos themselves are rated and how they compare to one another. It turns out the numbers on the mags are not very useful when comparing one brand to the next. Magneto output is generally expressed as primary amperage. The primary side of the ignition refers to what the mag itself generates as it spins. Magnets spinning in close proximity to a stator winding create electrical energy. Incidentally, they create AC energy or alternating current. A Super Mag 4 is traditionally known to have four amps. So when I tell people that a Super Mag 4 is very comparable to a Pro Mag 12 at the spark plug, they just can't believe it. But a Pro Mag 12 is 12 amps, isn't it? Isn't that three times the output of the Super Mag 4? No. Well, if that's not true, then the Pro Mag people must be lying, right? No. What the heck? When referring to AC electricity, the world has generally always used RMS numbers. Since the sine wave-like signal is constantly swapping positive and negative, a true average would be zero. Not a very useful number. An RMS, or root mean square value, is a useful way to express AC electrical power. Since the early days of magnetos, most mag shops measured the AC magneto output in terms of RMS current. They used either an analog or digital meter, blocked the points open, and spun the mag at a certain fixed RPM and took a reading. It's quick, inexpensive, and fairly repeatable from one place to the next. While everybody was using that same method, everybody knew what the number meant and what they were getting. Then along came someone who decided to measure their magneto output based on peak value. The peak value is the highest current the waveform will ever reach, and of course is always more than the average output. Clearly, comparing 12 amps peak to 4 amps RMS in this case is like comparing bananas and basketballs. The peak measurement method involves using an apparatus to read current directly on the scope. The peaks achieved by the mag can then be measured. So the 10 volt peaks on the scope here equate to exactly 10 amps of peak primary current from this Super Mag 4. So the difference is average versus peak measurements. Even measuring the mag generators the same using the peak method doesn't quite tell the whole story. The peaks of the Super Mag 4 are 10 amps and that's a couple of amps less than the Pro Mag measuring in at 12 peak amps. So how can they be pretty much the same at the spark plug? Because other factors come into play in the complete system. The Pro Mag has a points box to blast through, and the box circuit itself is powered by the mag's energy. That consumes some, but the electronics inside also dissipate a considerable amount of energy in the form of heat. That energy is wasted and gone before it even gets to the coil. With this type of magneto, every bit of energy coming out of here goes into the coil and is transformed into spark. Transformer efficiency also comes into play. The tiny coil in the points box can't quite convert the juice like the Super Mag's bigger coil can. That's why this mag needs to put out 12 peak amps to make the same output at the plug that this 10 amp mag makes. All mags sold or serviced here at FIE are shipped with a report showing both average and peak current, as well as a bunch of other information about output at the spark plug where it counts. Now you know how 4 amps can equal 12 amps by the time it gets to the spark plug. A similar thing happens with the numbers when comparing other familiar makes and models of MAG-2. I hope that sheds some light on the different numbers and what they mean. Thanks for watching.